Mountain bike geometry has evolved faster in the last few years than ever before. In a previous video, I discussed my thoughts from going between a four-year-old trail bike to something with current geometry. That comparison was between both medium-sized bikes. However, it seems a lot of people are upsizing on their new bike purchases. In some cases, jumping by as much as 60 millimeters of reach. And that got me thinking, why is this happening? And are we riding bikes that are too big for us? Before I get started, let me preface by saying the point of this video is nothing more than an observation and theory as to why this trend is happening right now, and hopefully to give you some guidelines to consider, especially if you're in between sizes as I am. Here's my oversimplification of what's been happening with mountain bike geometry. And in almost all cases, when new bikes get redesigned, there's an effort to make them more capable than the current model they're replacing. And the most common way to start is by slackening the head tube angle, which generally speaking will make the bike calmer and stable through rough, steep terrain. So a slack head tube angle is great, but remember, everything is a give and take here. And one of the biggest downsides is that the front end can get pretty light when you're climbing up something steep. To address this issue, the current trend is also to steepen the C-tube angle to shift your weight forward to keep the front wheel planted on those steep climbs. However, when we look at these two current trends together, you start to realize what's actually happening here. So something to consider here is when you slacken out the head tube angle, uh, it actually moves the bars a little bit closer to you. And at the same time, a steeper C-tube angle will push the saddle forward uh, towards the bars. So essentially what's happening is that the, the usable cockpit that you have is actually shrinking on some of these newer bikes. And that's why the front center or reach measurement has to be increased in order to address the shrinking cockpit. And that of course increases the overall wheelbase as well, which a slack head tube angle also contributes to. So size for size, we're already riding bikes that are significantly longer than the ones that we're replacing. And some are even choosing to take it a bit farther. And that's because many are surprised at how cramped the cockpit feels in the seated position when transitioning to the same size as their previous bikes. It's worth mentioning that the lower seat tubes on modern bikes means that your size selection is no longer limited by your inseam length. Therefore, a lot of people feel compelled to size up in these situations. However, what you're doing in this scenario is that you're choosing a bike based on how it feels in the seated position, which I don't know about you, is not where I have the most fun. On the descents, a longer bike may feel more stable going straight, but it will take more effort to move around those corners aggressively, which is exactly how you need to ride these newer bikes. However, here's why I think that won't matter for a lot of people, and that's because most are better at going straight and fast over technical terrain anyway, and I won't even include myself in this category as well. Let me explain. If you've ever played poker, there's a saying that the game takes five minutes to learn, but a lifetime to master. In mountain biking, in terms of progression, it's generally easier to go fast and straight over technical chunk, especially with how good these modern bikes are. But cornering is something we do every day, but takes a really long time to get good at. That is unless you're a professional enduro racer where choosing lines and carrying momentum in the corners is really what racing is all about. Those guys definitely run the longest bikes they can, right? Well, not exactly. Richie Rood is one of the fastest mountain bikers on this planet, and at 5 feet 10 inches tall, he's right at the cusp between two sizes, and he actually chooses to downsize to a medium SB150. Jared Graves in his Instagram post last month tackles this exact subject and has this to say. I think people put too much focus on the positive traits of new school, longer reach numbers, like more room for better body position and room to move the bike around underneath you for more stability, and gloss over what the older, smaller bikes do well, better in tight turns and easier to throw around. I think people need to try both sizes and work out what works best for them, and don't just choose a size based on what the current trends are for longer, slacker, and lower. I guess my main point of what I'm trying to say is, I think the current bigger bikes are better overall, but if you're in between sizes and can't decide, I would strongly recommend the smaller size. 
So what should you consider when you're demoing your next bike? If you take one thing away from this video, just consider the fact that the cockpit is adjustable, whereas in almost all cases, the overall wheelbase isn't. Things like adjusting the seat, using a different stem length, and even adjusting the height of the bar or a different sweep can make a huge difference in how the bike feels in that climbing position. And this is where a really good bike shop will help you get fitted properly. Also consider what you value based on your riding style. If you're looking for the ultimate straight line stability, sizing up can definitely benefit you. But if you want something a bit easier to throw around the corners or in tight places, sizing down could be your best bet. Also, don't get too caught up on the reach number because that can be very misleading. Instead, consider comparing the overall wheelbase length because that takes into account the entire length of the bike, including the reach, chainstay length, and even the head tube angle. Personally speaking, I look at the overall wheelbase number and the ratio to its chainstay length to get a pretty good idea of whether or not the bike is manageable for me given my riding style. This is an amazing time to ride bikes because there's never been more choice out there in the market. In the end, ride whatever you feel comfortable with and not what others are telling you on internet forums. So there you have it. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and remember, those trails don't get easier, you get better. We'll see you on the next one.